G'day everyone, my name is Hoi. In compositing, to blend one image with another, we usually have to adjust the three components of color to make it look realistic. Now the three components are the hue, saturation, and the luminosity. And in our case, I've also adjusted the noise and Gaussian blur just to also make it blend in a little bit more. Now a common way to do this is by using check layers, which are layers to help you make just the right amount of adjustment. Now as you saw in the title of this video, the focus of this episode is on luminosity check layers. So we won't go through the hue or the saturation check layers. To match the luminosity of one image to another, we're sometimes told to use a black and white check layer instead of a solid color check layer. So what is the difference? Is one better than the other? Now this is an explainer video on luminosity check layers, not a follow along tutorial on compositing. If you're here for compositing tips, I do have videos on that, so please check it out in the links in the description. Or if you only came here for the short answer, the short answer is that there shouldn't be any difference between using a black and white check layer or a 50% grade check layer, provided you use the correct blend modes for your check layers. And those blend modes are either the hue, saturation, or color blend modes. But stick around if you want the details and if you watch to the end, you probably end up being the nerdiest Photoshopper in your Photoshop group. Okay, so welcome back to the two of you who are still watching this, so I don't know where the skip button is. As I mentioned in the intro, there are two main ways of creating luminosity check layers, the black and white check layer or the 50% gray layer. But what exactly are the differences? Which one are quote unquote correct? So let me go to a different explainer file here. And here I've got a gradient of colors. I purposely chose these range of colors because to the human perception, yellow is the brightest, followed by cyan, green, and then all the way to the blue, which the human eye sees as the darkest. But from a computer point of view, they've all got the same level of brightness. I can demonstrate that to you by going to my color picker tool here and just keep an eye out for the B value here. And all of them should be 100% when I click on it. So click and drag. You can see that both the saturation and the brightness as I drag my eyedropper tool around is 100% bright. So just park that little tidbit at the back of your mind for the time being. Let's start off with creating a black and white adjustment layer. And immediately you see that the hue and the saturation has gone. What is left is just different levels of brightness. So if I just click on my gradient layer here and then go to my color picker, you can see that if I go to the yellow spot, my brightness level is 60%. Cyan is 60, green is 40, magenta is 80, red is 40, and then the blue is 20. So the natural question that I had when I first looked at this is, wow, these values seem very random. Where does it come from? Actually, it's not very random at all. It's very deliberate. So if I cancel out of this and then just select my black and white icon again, you can see that these values, the brightness values here, actually come from the default values here. So if I change it here, it should have an effect on the red channel here. I'll just undo that. So using these default values, you can see that the brightness levels from a computer point of view, the yellow and the cyan are the same brightness levels, and then the green and the red colors are the same as well. So now let's make a 50% gray layer here. I'm just gonna turn this one off here and go to our adjustment layer icon and create a solid color brightness of 50% and then press OK. And then what we're told in many tutorials is to change the blend mode from normal to color. Here you see that this sort of mimics the brightness that humans perceive when we see it in color. So if I switch this off, you can see that here we see yellow as the brightest and then we see blue as the darkest. Now, if I switch on my 50% gray layer here, it mimics what we just saw, but in a black and white version. And this is one of the reasons why many tutorials out there say, well, this means that using 50% gray layer is more accurate, at least to the human perception. But in my opinion, it misses out on a very crucial point, which is we haven't changed the blend mode of the black and white layer here. 
So if I just turn that on and then change the blend mode of the black and white layer from normal to say color, you'll see that it will have a very similar effect. Actually, not a similar effect. I would say we have an identical effect. So if I just turn on my 50% gray layer here, I did a naughty thing. I should have named this to 50% gray layer here. So let's do that while we're here so we don't lose track of that. And if I just turn that on, you see that there is no difference to the 50% gray layer here and the black and white layer here. So this is on, this is off. There is no difference. But you might say, well, Hoy, how do you know that, you know, a small pixel right here doesn't have a slightly different value to the 50% gray layer? Well, I've got two responses to that. One is if you can't pick up that minute difference just by looking at it, it's probably not something that you should worry about. But then some of you might say, well, that's just a cop out, Hoy, right? You know, we're uh, professionals here. We want to make sure that our images are exactly color accurate and we don't want to use a slightly imperfect way of doing things even though it looks okay. So to that I say no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a stamp visible layer of this black and white output here. So what I'm going to do is make sure that my mouse is on a visible layer. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to press command option shift E. If you're on a PC that's control alt shift E. I'm going to bring it that all the way to the top. Let's name that to the black and white layer so we can keep track of that. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn the 50% gray layer and now just make the same stamp visible layer but for the 50% gray layer. So remember to click on the layer that's visible and then just press command option shift E. That's control alt shift E. I'm going to move that to the second layer and then just rename that to 50% gray so we can keep track of it. I'm going to turn off the visibility of all these layers and just leave the black and white and the 50% gray layer here. Now let's change the blend mode of this black and white layer from normal to difference. So what the difference blend mode does is take the pixel value of the top layer and then subtracts it from the bottom layer. So if the pixel value of a pixel in the black and white layer is 100 and it's got the same pixel value on this layer of 100. So 100 minus 100 is 0. At 0 is black on the tonal range, which is why you see black here. And that signifies there is no difference. But some of you might say, well, how do we know that it is black? Maybe a pixel here and there is not black. So let's just check that out. I'm going to use my color picker tool here and just keep your eye out for your hue, saturation and your brightness values as I click and drag my eyedropper all around the canvas. You see that they all are stuck at zero as I'm going around the canvas. Now you might say, well, maybe you're not clicking and dragging. Maybe you're just hovering or maybe your eyedropper tool <laughs> is malfunctioning. I'm going to demonstrate that it is working as well. So I'm just going to cancel out of that and I'm going to create a colorful rectangle. So just click and drag it over like this and you can see that I've got yellow fill and then a magenta border here. So let's grab our color picker again and let's do it again. So keep our eye on hue, saturation and brightness. So click and drag. So zero, 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 zero. Let's hover over the magenta. <gasps> Look at that. It's picked up the magenta. It's also picked up the yellow. I'm going to go across the magenta and then back to the black canvas here. That demonstrates that my eyedropper from my color picker is working. So there is absolutely no difference between the black and white layer and the gray layer provided, and this is the crucial point, provided that we change the blend mode of the black and white layer, the black and white check layer here to color. Now, not only color, you can actually use the hue, saturation or color. It doesn't matter whether you're using the 50% gray layer or the black and white layer. You can use the hue, saturation or color blend modes. Now I also want to address one of the points that I see some tutorials make to demonstrate why the 50% gray layer is superior is that they will use a hue saturation level to demonstrate their point. And then 
dial down the saturation all the way to the left and then you'll see that the background has turned 50% grey and therefore demonstrating the point that the 50% grey layer is superior. What they miss again is that if you change the blend layer of the hue saturation from normal to any of these hue saturation or colour, this time I'm going to change it to saturation, it's going to be exactly the same as the 50% grey layer or the black and white layer. Now we can verify that quickly by making a stamp visible layer again here and let's move it up here and then change that to hue saturation. Put that on, difference, and here you see if I just turn this off, all of them off, and you can see that there is no difference in using a hue saturation layer with a saturation blend mode against a 50% grey layer using a colour blend mode. So that's the explainer video on why using the black and white check layer or the 50% grey layer or the hue saturation layer doesn't make a difference in using it as a luminosity check layer provided you use the correct blend modes. If you enjoyed this video or if you felt that you became a little bit nerdier, please let me know about it in the comments down below. Make sure that you like, subscribe as well as hit the bell icon so you can get notified from when my next video is out.